Morning, Will. Morning, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Very well. Good, good. Um, so listen, I thought we would talk a little bit about, uh, uh, for this section or this segment, uh, crypto. Yeah. Uh, given there was a big conference last week in mm -hmm. Miami, uh, sadly, neither of us participated. Yeah. Well, participated, obviously, physical, but... Um, yeah, virtually. Yeah. Virtually. Um, yep. And I thought it'd be interesting just to have a quick chat around crypto and the space and get some of your thoughts mm -hmm. and insights into... Um, yeah, and just a just just a general conversation around it. I guess yeah. firstly, um, anything interesting that came of uh, of the conference itself in terms of the crypto space. Uh, that um... Um, well, obviously, the I think the headline um, other than uh, than than Max's performance um, and his outburst uh, against Elon, which was which was fascinating, made it feel like uh, a rock concert for at least two and a half minutes. Mm. Um, I think, you know, the headline was obviously grabbed by the the news that El Salvador was going to uh, was going to adopt Bitcoin as their as their currency. What, um, what, what's your take on that? What, what, what's the what's the angle from El Salvador's what, perspective to get uh, a place at the world stage or don't forget about us? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's 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 a very good question. Um, I think, you know, I think We've discussed emerging markets before. I think mm. one of the challenges for emerging markets is the dependence on the dollar. You yeah. know, the reserve currency, status of the dollar, and the funding nature of the dollar, and and that is a in some cases that is a very big big boot on the back of uh, some economies that are struggling for political, for resource, for organizational democratic reasons. Um, so I think there's you know there are reasons for wanting not to be so aligned with the um, with the dollar, and that. You know that makes a lot of sense. Um, the challenge, I think, with with Bitcoin per se as a, as a government instrument is, um, you know, your ability to issue currency um, and ability to impact sort of currency versus fiscal spending is you've only got one one tiller. Um, mm. So, look, I, I think it, it. I hope it has many benefits for the country. I hope it's part of a larger adoption. I hope it's part of a larger narrative. Um, do I think it's going to solve their problems tomorrow? Absolutely not. No. Do, do you think this is a um, um, a two fingers up to the states and a more realignment to other countries that? I I, I don't think so. No. Um, I think it's. Uh, you know, all all decisions certainly it seems over the last four or five years seem to be, you know, the the political half life seems to be getting shorter and shorter and yeah. shorter. You know, sure. Brexit, Trump, etc. Um, so I think there's, you know, there is political opportunism here. Um, I think there is there is some rationale for, as I said, for avoiding dollar, but I don't think it's anything. I think to be be putting fingers up to anybody, you know, particularly in relative size, is is not so yeah. smart. Um, so no, I don't I don't think it's anything sinister like that. Okay. Um, no. Great. Um, Back to the conference. Uh, aside from uh, aside from El Salvador, yeah. um, any 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 big announcements? Anything interesting think, that came? I don't think big announcements. I mean, the, the thing I was most interested in uh, was uh, was Jack Dorsey's comment or comments around uh, crypto and and the crypto space being the most important, most interesting thing he has done, or most important thing he will be working on. You know, this is the guy who was way ahead of the curve in terms of you know social media and communication, whatever your views on Twitter, and again, you know, the ability to split his brain into and, and to set up you know square which has been phenomenally successful you know i think you've got to pay a lot of attention when somebody who is at the very cutting edge of technology data uh, media yeah. sentiment comes out and, and and talks knowledgeably about uh, about the crypto space so i think for me that was probably the the, the biggest standout mm -hmm. um endorsement of of the segment and sector as a whole but but no i think in large part it was you know, the conference itself was a was a celebration of developers. It was a celebration of, um, although slightly more muted than it would have been two weeks before, of, of uh, valuations. Yeah. Um, and then there was honestly there was probably a little bit of uh, you know post or towards the end of, of COVID, people being out and about. The weather was good. There was a reason to be together. Yeah. So yeah. I think it was it was many things. I don't think any huge announcements were were, were forthcoming outside of the you know the El Salvador news. And um, you know you mentioned Dorsey, and I, I know you mentioned before about Novogratz and Galaxy, and uh, what what is there any element of these you know these kind of figureheads, these guys, these these huge presence within crypto space talking up their own book, right? Clearly they have. They will benefit from 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 cryptocurrencies, you know, the, the the price going to the moon, right? So, what 
how how do how do investors look at crypto and how do they basically take a step back and say I'm not sure about this. How do I do my analysis and how do I understand whether I should be going about it? And 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 secondly is should you know would would you think about investing into specific cryptocurrencies or would you invest in companies like Square who have invested into cryptocurrencies or Tesla or whatever it may be? Yeah. Um, oh, I love 12 questions rolled in one. This Sorry. Is, it's easy to unpick. <laughs> so um, to pick on uh, sort of Mike and, and, and Jack uh, specifically, not not in the linear sense. No, I don't think there was there was no sort of talking up a particular um, uh, particular token or coin there was no which would benefit them I think it at this moment in the game it's very much more about getting wider adoption wider understanding so I, I, I see their role as, as more educators in the space than necessarily trying to push their own particular agenda now you know that said obviously the more uh, Mike talks about uh, the crypto space the more attention he draws to Galaxy and, and as a shareholder in Galaxy that's you know the derivative of but I don't see that as being his primary objective yeah. I mean he's been talking about this for a long while he was way ahead of the curve um, and I think you know the adoption and education is what he sees as being a big part of his job and I think that's uh, that's right and good um to, to sort of take your other questions, you know, for for how people should think about investing in them, I, I think it, it, it's very nascent, right? I mean, people are saying, oh, you know, the price has gone up an enormous amount, and that's right, certainly in the case of some of the, the tokens and coins. But the industry itself is, is still very nascent. I mean, we are still in the early stages. We've got to go through, you know, the seven or eight stages you've got to go through in, in terms of adoption and users and regulation and all these things that have come. So this will not be a straight line. And as with all new technologies, if we were to, to make crypto akin to the internet, if I look back to 2000 and the dot-com businesses, how many of them survived, right? So I think yeah. we're in a similar sense now with with, with crypto. Um, and, and there are different parts of it. So there's the sort of the money element, which is Bitcoin, and Bitcoin has set the gold standard. And there's a lot of debate around its its proof of work versus, uh, you know, POS. And, and, and I think, you know, that debate will rage around its environmental, yep. you know, efficacies. Yep. Um, but the, the, the great thing, the great benefit of, of Bitcoin is um, by construct, it's limited to 21 million coins. That is a fixed supply. So um, the in this era of debasement, the ability to know that they will never be more than 21 million coins um, would give people some comfort and, and, and is, addresses one of the concerns in the monetary sense. Yeah. Um, and then you move into the others, sort of Ethereum. Ethereum is a different, you know, if if Bitcoin is the gold, as it were, the, the money, um, then if Ether or Ethereum is is different. I, I liken that more to sort of copper. It's, it's, it's a base on which things are built or things from which things are built from it's an infrastructure rather than necessarily a product in its own right and and i think that's super interesting and then you have you know other products which i'm also excited about polka dot solana which yeah. are which are sort of uh verticals on the on the same um the same thread which is facilitating smart contracts and and we're talking about speed and we're talking about security um and i think this is i think this is enormous i think this yeah. this space will change will change everything. Yeah. Um, but it's not going to be a straight line. And we're going to see some of these go out of business. We're going to see uh, regulators hit some. We're going to see intermediaries hit. Um, so it absolutely will not be a straight line path. And many of them will fail. Um, but I think the the underlying technology is what I'm most excited by. So to answer your question directly, um, if you feel comfortable in investing in these, then I think it's sensible to put, you know, 1%, 2% of your, um, your, your liquid assets into these and yeah. and sort of forget about them. Um, see where so you're. Would you, so would you would you invest into the actual cryptos themselves, or would you invest via companies who are actually taking it on? So, so I would, but that's only the result of having spent quite a lot of time looking at them. Yeah. Um, you know, there are companies. Mike Saylor's uh, MicroStrategy is is a way of getting access to Bitcoin. You mm -hmm. know, with his recent loan note, um, giving you direct access, effectively. Uh, Tesla being a proxy. Um, you know, and the S and P in theory giving you an, an indirect access to. to to, to Bitcoin. Um, and then there are others like Mike's. You could buy shares in, in Galaxy. You can buy shares in uh, CoinShares. You can buy shares in Coinbase, which, yep, yep. which give you access indirectly to the underlying complex. And I think yep. for unless you are comfortable um, understanding the differences as you would companies, understanding the difference between the coins and the tokens and their yep. various... Uh, payouts, then I would probably stay away away from them and invest rather more in the proxies, which give you a diversified bet. So exchanges are a good way to go. Um, you can look at things like Grayscale. You can look at the ETFs, you know, Kathy Woods at ARK, which has a big, big exposure yep. to some of these. So there are other ways of becoming exposed to them, um, yep. perhaps less risky. 
Um, okay. But, but and, yeah. and 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 um, okay, that's great. So that gives us a good a good understanding of different ways of getting access to these. We don't need to actually be buying specifically cryptos. You can go via equities and get some exposure exactly, to it exactly. if you're not comfortable. Um, I guess you know the last point that I wanted to talk about. We have just a couple more minutes left. Um, is really the regulatory aspect of it, or the, the well. There isn't really a regulatory aspect aside from a lot of discussions around what will the regulators do, how will they actually go about it, when will they do it. Um, what's your sense on uh, on the yeah. regulatory aspect and, and it kind of maybe timing? Yeah. If if I mean, it's a yeah. bit of a so I, so I think there are three things to think about when when thinking about the regulatory regime. First up, it's. Um, it's not going to be organized. I think we've seen enough regulatory responses to things to know that it's not organized globally. Mm. Secondly, it's normally late. Um, so I think to expect regulators to do something forward-looking is to, to act very differently to what's happened in the past. So mm. whilst I think there will be a lot of discussion around regulation, I think it will not be uh, joined up, and I think it will probably be, be after the fact. Um, so I wouldn't assume it to come now outside of necessary noise. Two other things to think about is, you know, what is the job of a regulator? Well, the in, in my view, there's, their job is to protect uh, unsophisticated investors, right? It's to protect loss. So um, as the crypto space gets bigger, so the pressure on them to try and regulate to prevent loss will, will absolutely grow. But there is an interesting part with the crypto space, which is a subject to a whole other debate, which is its potential threatening of fiat. Uh, and, and this might change the narrative from regulators' perspective or central banks. Um, and we're going to see this play out. China are way ahead of the curve, in my, in my view, in this space. So I think when you're thinking about regulation, I don't expect it to arrive tomorrow. I think the regulation that will arrive is going to be um, around the intermediaries, the banks, the exchanges that allow the on-ramping into the crypto space. Um, there will be a lot of discussion, and I think it will not be joined up. So you're going to see different responses from different countries. Um, and as the, as the crypto complex grows, then so you will see see more noise around it but the interesting part for me is how central banks respond to it do they see bitcoin and its sisters as it were as a threat to fiat yep. if they do when it gets big enough that they perceive it to be a threat to the construct of fiat then i think you will find a much larger uh perhaps more aggressive response although i wonder and this is subject again to to d further debate uh, i wonder whether by that point it might be too late to do anything about it but um right. Regulation, in short, it's absolutely coming, um, but I don't think it'll be joined up, and I think it will probably be to start with it'll be targeted at the intermediaries rather than the the coins um, or the, the 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 companies themselves. Perfect. Well, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Fascinating topic. Uh, we'll probably have more of the crypto space, but um, thanks again for having. Me. Thanks very much. Cheers. <laughs>